Welcome to Android Dialogues, where we have bite-sized conversations with people from the Android community. I'm Chuki Chan, and today we are chatting with... Mark Allison. Hello, Mark. Hi. Where are you based and what do you do? Uh, I'm based just outside London, England. Okay. Uh, I'm a freelance Android dev. I'm currently working with the really nice folks at Navoda. Okay, so do you commute to London to work um, with them? I then? work a couple of days in London, a couple of days from my office. Oh, great. So Cool. Uh, but we are actually not in London. We are in New York right now mm -hmm. uh, because New York, Joy-Con New York. Um, so it's been really fun. And we probably know each other because you've been blogging and I like went to Joy-Con London, a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. um, but how do you get involved in Android? Um, oh, well, I've been a, <laughs> a dev for many, many years um, of various things. Right. Um, and I happened to join T-Mobile in the UK mm -hmm. uh, just at the time when they launched the G1. Ooh, way back when. So I've yeah. been involved with Android since the early days. Yeah. And. Uh, really just went from there so because they were pushing the g1 i was working on sort of internal um projects to try and excite marketing people um so we were doing a lot with the g1 because it was really accessible uh, much more so, so you were writing platforms. apps for the g1 so the t-mobile can tell people buy the g1 because we have awesome apps we were uh, basically doing stuff internally to uh -huh. try and uh, develop them into products um but once we got marketing people excited, we'd run away before they ruined it. So it oh, was... <laughs> interesting. So it's more like selling to them that yeah. this is exciting. That's cool. But then you got your hands wet and then that you have been doing Android nonstop since then? Pretty much. Wow. So can you recite from Cupcake all the versions? Um, We're not going to do it now, but this is more like a trivia question. Yeah, probably, but uh, <laughs> well, not, not after we're, yeah, we're going to challenge him on, on, on camera. Cool. And like I said, we are here for Joycon New York City. Mm -hmm. And you are here to talk about vectors? Yeah, vector drawable. So what is it? Vector drawable is a way of drawing graphical elements. Um, but we have PNG. Why do we need vectors? Uh, PNG is great for, for bitmaps. Mm -hmm. um, we have shape drawables in Android, which can do some stuff quite efficiently and are resized well but they're pretty limited. So shape drawable basically means we can make rectangle and oval. Yeah. Can we do more than that? You can sort of uh, get some nice effects with uh, I've shape done drawables. insets, like trying to push yeah. them into different uh, positions. Yeah. And they can get quite complex quite quick. Right. You can do some nice tricks with them, right. but they can but get mostly, pretty complex. But yeah, mostly it's just a rectangle. Yeah. With round corners. Yeah. So you would think of vector drawables have like the next step in... Uh, Vectors. In declarative uh, uh, yes. images. Uh, vectors are much more powerful because they're based on SVG paths. Okay. Uh, SVG is an established uh, uh, vector format. Right. Um, and the path data in there is pretty powerful. You can do some pretty uh, incredible stuff with that. Um, what vector drawable does is encapsulates that in to groups and various paths so that you can actually do some really quite interesting stuff within Android. So it, it's, a, it's a adding layers around the SVG path data so you can start really doing some quite so cool animations and stuff. Um, but it's not exactly SVG path, right? So I cannot just like take an SVG file and just stuff it in and then just like, ooh, it works. Until recently, no, okay. but uh, in the latest uh, preview, the 1.4 preview of Android Studio, there is now, uh, you can, it, when you create a new resource, mm -hmm. one of the options in there is a vector asset. Oh. That will allow you to import an existing SVG file and create a vector drawable But wouldn't that kind of need to dumb it down because like some, like not, I don't think everything is supported. Like for example, like is gradient supported in vector drawable? Um, to be honest, I haven't played with uh, the import too much. Okay. I've been tending to handcraft stuff right. because um, because you didn't used to have this tool. <laughs> exactly, so, it, yeah. it's pretty new uh, right. at the moment. So I've not played with it a great deal, but it, it seems to do quite a good job. Um, one of the the issues previously is. Uh, SVG does support other things as well as path data. Right. So you have some some basic uh, 
You can have drawing. circles. Yeah. <laughs> but like, I don't think vector drawable does circles. No, it right. doesn't. But from what I've been able to gather, this new import tool will actually convert that to nice. path Nice, because I've been doing that by hand, because you can do uh, Q, which is quadratic Bezier yep. curve something like yeah, that you and got... you can make a circle with like a q over yeah uh, which uh, well maybe we should actually go a little <coughs> bit into that um so for people who are not familiar with the svg path mm -hmm. so essentially is uh drawing instructions so you can ask the svg program or android in this case to do line two so you can draw a line from a point to another point or you can ask it to do curves which is defined by the like either quadratic or, or cubic bezier yep um, and essentially, you are holding the hand almost of someone that says, draw a line from here to here, and then you're instructing it. So that's what the SVG path is all about. Yeah. Um, and then we have the same concept with vector drawable, which means that things are infinitely scalable because you are yeah. not having a vector, I'm oh, sorry, not a vector, like a bitmap grid, which if you make it big, then it looks all grainy and ugly. Yeah. So that would be one. Yeah, they yeah. scale extremely well, so you can create an SVG and it will just work on all resolutions. So, so you don't need to create separate assets for your different pixel densities. Like HDPI, yeah. XHDPI. Um, so do you usually, for for the vector drawables, do you do it for your icons? Do you do it for bigger images? Like, What is a typical use case of vector drawable? It's really anything that isn't bitmap data. So bitmap data which is uh, pictures. Right, right, if you like, snap a photo, then yeah. that would not work for That's a vector just drawing. not gonna translate okay. well. But if you've got sort of line drawings and gradients mm -hmm. and backgrounds that, that are, uh, 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 are things that you can represent in uh, a declarative way, right. then it's really good and it scales. Mm -hmm. There's also other tools being built into Android Studio. They're not there yet, but they were announced at I.O. So that if you drop in an SVG, uh, sorry, a vector drawable for your icon, uh -huh. at compile time, it will generate your PNG for the various uh, oh, densities so from that's, that. That's actually a good question because um, if I can just use vector drawables so that the Android system is going to programmatically generate these things, mm -hmm. Are there still situations where actually, oh, you know, there are like performance hits and I should pre-convert that into PNG and embed the PNG in my in my app? Like, how do I decide when to I, do I convert it at compile time, the SVG, or do I convert it into vector drawable and then draw them at runtime? Um, it really is going to depend on so what measure, your use basically. case is. Okay. Um, yeah. So, but people like rules of thumbs, but sometimes, you know, can't be lazy. You just have to measure it. Sure. Um, I guess the que one question is how scalable do you need it to be? Right. If you need to be able to display yeah. at lots of uh, sizes because you've maybe got some things being dynamically sized within your app, mm -hmm. then vectors are a really good uh, uh, use there because they're going to scale well. Right. Whereas cool. you then try and fit that to... Well, you, if you're trying to embed like a huge image for the hugest phone, that may mean that the small phone will just crash because it doesn't have enough Absolutely. memory to load the giant image. Whereas yeah. if you are just telling it instructions on how to draw, then it can draw as big as it wants. It can draw mm -hmm. on the TV and it will be no problem. Yeah. Cool. So we're going to like do it one notch up now. So we have vector drawable. Mm -hmm. How about animated vector drawable? I love animated vector <laughs> drawable. Tell us about it. <laughs> Um, anyone that follows my blog knows I, I'm very keen on animations. Mm -hmm. I love animating right. stuff and uh, I just love tinkering and playing and getting some silky smooth animations and just getting things slick. And uh, Animated vectors, um, they are made possible by, by this metadata that's added around the SVG data. Oh, you mentioned that earlier, the groups. Yeah, yeah, you've got groups and you've got various attributes. So like the SVG path data, you can specify the fill color, the stroke color, right. and things like that. You can also specify opacity on the groups. Mm -hmm. You can perform translations and rotations. Oh. And then through animated vector drawable, you map those to standard object animators. 
So you can so basically... make something that appear by changing its opacity. Yep. Okay. Precisely. Um, cool. And you can rotate things, and you can. You, you've also got a clip path in there, which allows you to control what parts of the image are drawn. And you can even animate that, so you can get things filling up and emptying. And Ooh, that's really that nice. That sounds really fun. So, what is kind of one concrete way that you've used that in an app? Because you know we can write sample apps all day long, but you know they're kind of toy examples. Um, there was a, an example I did where I had a floating action button. Uh -huh. And what I wanted it to do was when the user tapped on it, just to open a sub menu with three smaller fabs. Yeah, right. And so I had a plus icon mm -hmm. on the fab. When the user tapped, I wanted it to convert to a minus icon as it expanded. Oh. So what I did was a rotation and actually did an animation with animated vectors mm -hmm. to convert the plus to a minus, which with a 90 degree rotation in there just really looked smooth and gave a nice material like flow as the the uh, uh, the, the buttons expanded and contracted. Cool, is that on your blog? That's on my blog. Great, so um, we'll add it to the show notes so that people can actually yeah. see it in sure. action. Um, so this is all fine and good, but which version of Android do I need to have vector drawable, an animated vector drawable? At the moment, Unfortunately, you need to say API or uh, MinSDK 21. 21! Which, sadly, not many of us can use. Right. What is good on the horizon that um, back in uh, January, uh, there was a repo pushed to AOSP mm -hmm. uh, or a new project pushed to ASP, whether by accident or <laughs> deliberately, I don't know, right. called Vector Drawable Compact. Ooh, Compact, I like that. So uh, we're familiar with compact libraries right. on Android. So it will bring these technologies to older versions. Yep, absolutely. Um, so so can I do it now? Can I go grab that source code and just? Unfortunately, not. <sighs> so many catches. It's a placeholder for now, but uh, but there is hope. But it's clearly something that is being worked on because it got pushed to AOSP. So you can look at a placeholder app that doesn't do, uh, sorry, a placeholder library that right. doesn't actually do much, but it's coming. But it's coming, coming, yay, awesome. Cool, um, so switching gears a little bit, I briefly like, mentioned that you know we can find stuff on your blog, and mm -hmm. if people don't know, Mark blogs like crazy, I don't even know. Do you do like three blog posts a week? Or like, I don't know how many. One years. a week. One a week, okay, it feels like three a week. Um, so I don't know how, do you come up with all these ideas? Like do you just religiously watch all the like videos that Google come out and say, oh, that looks like something I can blog about. Like, where do they come from, all these blog posts? Um, <clears throat> a lot of them uh, are born just out of uh, new technologies coming out. Sure. Um, you know, recently I've done the design support library because uh -huh. That was released at I.O. and that's a really powerful and useful mm -hmm. library. Um, so I guess like my question is, um, so for me, um, it kind of goes both ways. So sometimes it's like that, ooh, shiny new things, let me pay with it, play with mm -hmm. it. But sometimes it's more like, oh, I have to do this at work. And then I ended up using a particular library in, the, in a particular way. It's like, oh, cool, you know, I will put that in my blog. But then. I, I don't keep a one post a week schedule because I cannot control, you know, what cool stuff will come my way. So how do you fill your pipeline to make sure that it's always something to talk about on your blog? Um, it's something that's always been a concern right. that I'll just run out of stuff. Yeah. But it's never happened yet. Oh. Um, helped by the fact that Google keep updating Android. Good job, so. Google. <laughs> keep, um, keep marking business. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, um, for some reason, I just never seem to run out of stuff. Um, there's always something. Um, sometimes it's stuff that I work on during the day right. um, and it sparks an idea. Usually what I try and do is come up with at least some narrative story, an app or a, a use. Right. Um, so I look at a technology, okay, how can I, we use that as an example to explain it. Right. So once I've come up with the idea for an example, I write the code. Mm -hmm. Once I've got the code written, then the articles pretty much write themselves. Because as you write the code and get it working, you find out stuff, you find out some of the pitfalls, some right. of the, the good stuff, some of the bad stuff, some of the stuff. So it all starts from the code. 
and then yeah. you 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 write prose around it, and then make screenshots or, or yeah. animated gifs, I guess, if you are doing animations or videos. Yeah. Cool. Um, and sometimes you know, once I've got the code written, I'll have an idea. Okay, that's I I, I like to write keep the articles between. 500 to 1,000 words. Okay. Sometimes they exceed that. I actually don't measure how many words <laughs> I write. That's a good point. I should see how long they go. Um, but And sometimes you just feel, okay, this is getting long. It needs breaking down to, to keep part it one, into more manageable two. chunks. Right. Um, if I was just to write completely uh, post end to end of the entire subject, I'd never get one a week out. So I have to, to break them up a little well, bit. Well, and also I feel like these days, people don't have a lot of attention span. <laughs> so it's good to not scare them away by just seeing the scroll bar being this small, yeah. right? It's like, oh, okay, I can read that. This is okay. I'm not going to get overwhelmed. So part of it's for you, but probably for the audience yeah. as well, so that they are in digestible chunks. Yeah. yeah. If you've got sort of a 3,000 word essay to read, you're right. not going to take it all yeah. in in one sitting. So, you know, that probably does work. Yeah. I've never tried well the part well. one, part two thing. So that's a good way to have one block per post, uh, per week, I just have to <laughs> chat them up. Cool. But the problem I, I often find is I get the code written and I have an idea, okay, I can break this down into three parts. Right. And so I approach it with three parts and one a series I, I'm just working on at the moment, which I'm going to be looking at the data binding library. Oh. I wrote the code, okay, that's three parts. It's now five parts. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, extra! Sometimes things grow right, sort of right. organically. Yeah, you, so. can, you, you can't predict everything. Cool, great. Well, thanks for chatting with us. Pleasure. If people want to follow up, where can they find you on the internet? Uh, stylingandroid.com is the, the best place. On mm -hmm. there's all my contact details, my Twitter, Google Plus, and all of that good stuff. Great. Well, thank you for talking with us. Thank you. And enjoy Joy-Con. Oh, I intend to. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.